The Tenth Amendment states that powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. This amendment makes sure that the federal government not only possesses the powers which are delegated to it and articulates limited powers in the structure of government. Charles Cooper suggests that the framers of the Tenth Amendment had two purposes in mind when drafting it, the necessary rule of construction and to reaffirm the nature of the federal system. The Tenth Amendment also affirms the Constitution's basic scheme of defining the relationship between the national and state governments. The Tenth Amendment is a good example of Donald Lutz's description of the United States Constitution as being an incomplete text. The writers of the Constitution couldn't have no way of knowing how government would need to be involved in the future. He mentions that a significant number of questions we can bring to it are not answerable in the use of one document alone, and that issues like technology need further constitutional development, but nothing in the U.S. Constitution deals explicitly with privacy. It's important to mention that he states that, the, that he says that the state constitutions must also be considered. He also says that it was left for future generations to judge the progress of the experiment, make adjustments, and add their own considered innovations to the Constitution, which we have seen in the additions of the Bill of Rights, specifically to the Tenth Amendment, which allows for states to have a say in what their future laws would be. While no court case is used to the Tenth Amendment in regards to the decision in regards to a decision in the nation's first half century, it is used more commonly in today's courts. One of the court cases I came across regarding the Tenth Amendment is that of Bond versus the United States. Carol Bond of Pennsylvania stole chemicals from her employer and smeared them all over doorknobs, car doors, and the mailbox in an attempt to poison her husband's pregnant mistress. She was indicted for stealing mail and for violating the Chemical Weapons Convention Implementation Act of 1998. Bond appealed by applying the Chemical Weapons Treaty violated the Tenth Amendment. The Court of Appeals believes she lacks standing to make such a claim. However, the Supreme Court justified this claim, sent her back to the Third Circuit Court of Appeals, and on remand, the Court found that the Supreme Court's decision gave Bond standing to raise the question of the federal government's power to enforce legislation that implements a treaty. The case returned to the Supreme Court where they ruled that the Implementation Act did not reach her conduct. Another interesting case that you may be more familiar with is that of Mercy v. v the National Collegiate Athletic Association, also known as Christie the National Collegiate Athletic Association in regards to Chris Christie of New Jersey, involving whether the U.S. federal government had the right to control state lawmaking in regards to state-sponsored betting. New Jersey sought to overturn the Professional Amateur Sports Protection Act. Uh, the pro-betting side described the federal government position as commandeering, saying that it was trying to enforce laws that the state should have the responsibility to enforce while those who um, were in the opposition to it looked to the Supremacy Clause to keep um, PS, PASPA in force. The Supreme Court reversed lower court findings favoring New Jersey and in deciding that the PASPA violated the anti-commandeering principle and that they declared the law unconstitutional. Cooper calls the Tenth Amendment a fail-safe mechanism, stating that Congress has broad power to regulate and even to subject states to generally applicable federal laws, but the power ends when it reaches too far into the retained dominion of state autonomy. Thanks.